So my name is Debbie Nicole. I'm the chairperson of the workshop committee for the Kent County Master Gardeners and our presenter today is Cheryl Fisher. Uh, Cheryl Fisher was a member of the Kent County Master Gardener class of 2019. Um, she's been really involved in lots of activities, including uh, community gardens, uh, for which I believe she's receiving an award. Um, and she also chairs our Green Thumb program uh, that we put on every year in the spring at Modern Maturity Center. Um, so those are just some of the few things that she's involved in. Um, and this is actually her the first time she has done a workshop for the workshop committee. So give her a warm uh, welcome and uh, I will turn it over to you, Cheryl. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hello, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, good, good. Uh, welcome everyone on this beautiful fall day. Today, we're going to talk about the joy of planting flower bulbs. Um, my favorite seasons, I guess, are spring and fall. Um, fall, because today was absolutely gorgeous outside. The leaves have turned and everything's beautiful. But spring is also my favorite because I like the spring bulbs and spring flowers that come up. So today, we're going to talk about the joy of planting flower bulbs. So here's what we're going to cover today. What are bulbs? Why plant bulbs? When to plant bulbs? Which bulbs to plant? Where to plant them? How to plant them? And a little bit of aftercare. So what are bulbs? And only some plants are commonly call called bulbs actually are bulbs. A bulb is any plant that stores its complete life cycle in an underground storage structure. And that structure is there to store nutrient reserves to ensure the plant's survival. There are five types of storage structures. True bulbs, and you can see a picture of those on the right side of the screen. Corms, tubers, tuberous roots, and rhizomes. A sixth category of fleshy roots includes daylilies and peonies, but we'll talk about these five types of storage uh, in a little bit more detail. True bulbs. Now true bulbs have five major parts. There's a basal plate, which is the bottom of the bulb from which the roots grow. The fleshy scales, which are the primary storage tissue. The tunic, and the tunic is that skin-like covering that protects the fleshy scales. The shoot, which consists of the, the developing flower and the leaf buds, and the lateral buds. And they can develop into bubbles or little offsets. True bulbs are either tunicate bulbs or imbricate bulbs. Now, tunicate bulb has a paper-like covering or tunic that protects the scales from drying and from mechanical injury. An imbricate bulb is, has thick scales, but they don't have a covering at all. Uh, so tunicate bulbs include tulips, daffodils, hyacinths, hyacinths and alliums, all the ones we like to see in the spring. Corms. Now corms <clears throat> are a swollen stem base that is modified into a mass of storage tissue. It doesn't have a visible storage rings when you cut it in half that really distinguishes it from a true bulb. But corms contain a basal plate, which is the bottom of the bulb, which, grows, which roots develop, and a thin tunic and a covering point. Corm bulbs include gladiolus, crocus, and autumn crocus. And you can see a picture of these. Now, tubers differ from true bulbs and corms by not having a basal plant from which roots develop or a protective tunic covering. Caladium tuber has buds scattered over the tuber surface from which shoots and roots develop. You can see that picture. Plants that develop from tubers include caladiums and the common vegetable, the potato, but the potato doesn't flower, oxalis and anemones.
tuberous roots differ from other root structures by the nutrient reserves being stored in an actual root instead of an enlarged stem. For example, the dahlia root produces the buds at the top end of the root or at the very base of the stem. Tuberous roots of a dahlia should not be divided before placing in storage in the fall, but should be divided at planting time. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, you know, dividing bulbs and planting them and when's the right time to plant them a little later on. Um, the tuberous rooted begonia produces from buds on top of the round flat tuber. And we try to give you an example of these because if you if you don't know, once you pull the bulb out of the ground, you can see what type of root it has. Rhizomes differ from other storage structures by growing horizontally under the surface of the soil. And some of these plants can be very invasive. Uh, the lily of the valley rhizome spreads horizontally underground and produces little pips, which develop into new plants. Now this plant can be increased in your landscape by digging it in the fall and removing the pips, which can be developed for roots for replanting. So you can see from the picture how those roots kind of wrap around in the top of the soil. Now fleshy roots store nutrient reserves in the fleshy roots. Both peonies and daylilies can be propagated by dividing. And you can divide the root clumps of peonies in the fall, leaving at least three crown buds with each clump. And you can divide daylily in the fall or the spring into little plantlets with a single fan of leaves. Daylilies are hardy herbaceous plants with a perennial growth habit. They have clumps of green, smooth foliage that dies back during the winter. So that's a lot of the, the science behind bulbs, what kinds they are, you know, how they grow and what, what they mean for different bulbs. But you may be wondering why plant bulbs? I know why I plant bulbs because I love to see them. But planting bulbs are easy. They're packaged for easy planting and low maintenance. In fact, I was at uh, Redner's yesterday. When I went in the door, there's a whole display of bulbs ready to plant. They're bountiful, they're brightly colored flowers in all varieties. So if you're looking to spruce up your garden with color and vibrancy, there's nothing like bulbs. And they are dependable, they bloom on time. So you will know when you put that bulb in the ground, you know what's gonna come up and you know about when it's gonna come up too. When to plant. Now, fall planting bulbs, we can plant those as soon as the ground is cool. Now, being, the ground being cool around here is, is kind of changing over time. It used to be, you know, in October, it started getting cool. The ground was getting cool. You could start putting in your bulbs. But here we are in November, and in today it's like 60 degrees outside. <laughs> and it's going to be warmer this year. So, as soon as the evening temperature is around like 40 to 50 degrees and it gets kind of stays kind of cool consistently, it's really safe to put the bulbs in the ground. In fact, you can put the bulbs in the ground right up until it's freezing. Um, I've planted bulbs as late as you know, late November. So summer planting bulbs, these are the bulbs that are planted in the late spring after the frost. And you really have to wait until after the frost to put those blooms in, put those bulbs in, sorry. Now, which plants bulbs to plant in spring? Spring bulbs are also called hardy bulbs because they are planted in the fall, spend winter in the ground, and they flower in the spring. Some of the more common bulbs are tulips, irises, daffodils, crocus, and allium. Those are all those wonderful flowers you see first thing in the spring, right? That's how you know spring is coming because you can see those little crocuses and daffodils popping up out of the ground. They need several weeks of cold temperatures to break their dormancy and to flower to full potential.
Now, which bulb to plant for the summer? Summer bulbs, also called tender bulbs, are planted in the spring and flower or leaf out in summer. Uh, like your gladiolis, gladiolus, your lilies, even elephant ears are common examples of summer bulbs. Some will bloom late in the summer for a longer period of time, like dahlias that bloom into fall. Now, summer bulbs aren't tolerant of cold temperatures and should only be planted after the ground warms up and there's no longer a threat of frost. And if you purchase these bulbs before planting time, you will have to store them in a cool, dry spot until they're ready to plant. Okay, so maybe you've gotten some bulbs, you went out and bought some bulbs, very important to read the package and figure out, you know, when they're going to grow. And now you can talk about where you want to plant them. Now, I find that it's really nice to tag team your bulbs with annuals. Um, it just makes for a nice color display. You can interplant them with uh, other perennials. Uh, you can insert into ground cover or you can grow bulbs in pots. And you can grow almost anything in a pot. Um, you can see from the picture, you can vary them up as much as you want. Some more design ideas for flower bulbs. You can plant the flower bulbs in clusters. Um, let's see, you can plant low bulbs in front of high bulbs. Uh, you can stagger the bloom time. And, or you can try a double decker effect. And I saw a question pop up and we'll try to get to that at the end, okay? Cheryl, um, we, can, we can save the questions at the end if, if that's more convenient for you. Okay. Or do you wanna do it now? I don't know. Well, since it was my question, I think we can wait, but I know that uh, Zoe, also, Zoe also asked a question, but I, I think we okay. can wait until the end. Okay, all right. Um, Okay, well, that's one, some design ideas. Now, here's another design idea. This is called lasagna planting. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that. Um, of course, the lasagna is not only good for Sunday dinner, but it's great for bulbs. How do I get this into the book there? Can you see that on my screen? There. Yes. Okay, so um, let me go back up. Now for lasagna planting, this is just to get a, a more variety of plants and bulbs of different colors, different sizes that will bloom uh, at different times. So you plant bulbs of different sizes and you stagger the bloom times and you kind of put it in layers. This kind of planting uh, or planting works great in large containers that are deep and wide enough to hold them. Whoops. Hold on. So here's an example of lasagna planting. Um, the first thing you do is put a good layer of potting soil for planting depth about eight inches. Uh, you want lots of soil in that deep pot. Then you would put a few late spring blooming bulbs such as daffodils or tulips in the pot. Put another layer of potting soil of a planting depth around six inches. And then you add mid or spring blooming bulbs such as more tulips or whatever. And then you just keep layering it. You can add another layer of soil, and then you add another uh, layer of bulbs that are coming up even earlier. So in your pot, you will always have something blooming sometime during the spring. And it makes for a pretty uh, decoration. How to plant. Now, you have to choose where you plant, um, full sun or partial shade. 
You have to figure out where you want to plant it in your yard. Um, you have to prepare the planting bed and you do that by adding compost or fertilizer. And basically it's very simple. You plant them two to three inches apart with the point up and two to four inches deep. And you can also fertilize that uh, with nitrogen if you need to. And if you don't, if you're not sure about uh, how your soil is, of course, you can always do a soil test. Now, common problems. Sometimes um, if the plants or bulbs are getting inadequate nutrients, um, if it's cutting, it's because you're cutting off the foliage before it has died back, uh, you should leave it. Um, you will find out with, um, with uh, tulips especially and other plants, once they flower, you know, the, the first time I planted tulips, the first time they flowered, I went and I cut them all down right after they flowered. Well, that's a no-no because all the nutrients need to be are stored in that foliage and you need to leave it there so it can uh, feed the plant. So leave it there. Uh, inadequate sunlight, uh, if your bulbs, if your bulbs are planted in the shade, you might move them to the sun if they're not growing as pretty as you like to see them or if it's overcrowding, where you get large clumps of flowers all bunched up together. Well, you can always separate those. Aftercare, oops, in the spring and summer, uh, fertilizing is important. Uh, you can spread organic fertilizer like compost and also pruning is important. So when the flowers are done blooming, you can cut the flower head off, but do not cut the foliage. Again, uh, you need the foliage there so that it can provide nutrients to the flower so that it grow back. Um, after blooming, cut only the flower back. Spring bulbs, bulbs that require um, Chilling can be dug up and stored until, until pre-chilling time the following fall. Uh, in warmer clients, uh, some bulbs do require chilling and can be dug up. But for colder climates, they can stay in the ground and many will multiply year after year. Um, I don't dig up a lot of flower bulbs and they tend to come back every year or I'll add new flower bulbs like tulips and uh, gladiolus. Summer bulbs can be left in the ground with a layer of mulch in winter to protect and insulate them. So you don't always have to dig them up. It's best to follow the directions on the package. So we talked about digging up bulbs. Oops, I keep hitting the wrong button, sorry. Um, if you're going to dig up bulbs, you want to cut any remaining stems and foliage back to a couple inches above the soil level. Uh, make sure you loosen the soil around the bulbs and carefully and remove them. Shake as much soil as possible from the bulbs and then spread them out on a newspaper in a cool, shady place and allow them to dry for just a few days. The, the key thing is to keep them dry and keep them cool. Helpful hints. I don't know why this picture is up that way. Um, here's a helpful hint. Don't store fruit, especially apples or vegetables, in the refrigerator at the same time you're storing bulbs for pre-chilling. And you don't want to do that because they emit ethylene gas that can kill the plant inside the bulb. So the fruit, the vegetables, uh, emit ethylene gas that can kill your balls. Um, your soil pH is important. Uh, the soil pH of six to seven brings out the better color in your blooming bulbs. So get your soil tested again if you need to. 
plant bulbs in the same season they are purchased. And I mentioned this before because they really won't last until next year. And if your bulbs are to be left in the ground while they're dormant, you might want to place some marker there so you can remember where they are after you cut the foliage back so that you can better plan your garden. Uh, bulbs need to breathe, so store them in aerated paper or mesh bags and never in plastic because they can't uh, breathe in the plastic. And of course, most important is to read the label on the, on the bulb package. So, uh, whoops. You can design your own flower garden. Hope I've given you some tips today that you can look forward to. Just pick the perfect time to plant your spring flower garden or your summer blooms. Now it's not too late to put those bulbs in the ground for next spring. Use a variety of flowers and arrangements to make your garden as beautiful as you'd like to see it. So that's the end. Kathy, there were a couple questions or any, I'll open it up for questions now. Well, we've got some questions in the chat room and then we can see if there's any more questions that show up. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question is, will peonies propagate on their own or do we need to separate them? I believe peonies will propagate on their own. Um, it depends on where you have them planted and how close you want them to be. So you'd have to plant it uh, a little bit. If they look like they're getting too bunched up close together, you might want to separate them. Okay. And I had, I had asked the question, but you, you did answer it. My question was, do you need to dig the summer bulbs up before winter or will they survive the winter after the first year? I know my father-in-law always planted canna lilies and he would always dig them up, store them in his garage in the winter and then replant them, which seemed like a lot of work, but they were always very beautiful. Okay. All right. Um, and Zoe asks if Arcana considered a summer bulb. <laughs> Maybe I just answered that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Because they come up in late summer, right? You plant them in early, early summer and they'll come up later that summer. And how do you plant uh, gladiolus to keep them from falling over? <laughs> it is, it's deeper, better. I, I'm not sure about the question to that. I've, I've seen them uh, grow very tall and all lean over. And I've also seen them where they weren't very tall out of the ground. Uh, they were a lot shorter. Mm. So I'm not sure if digging them, planting them deeper uh, means that they will, you know, all that growth will happen underground and they'll just do the flower at the top. I'm not sure about that. I have to look that up. Okay. That's all the questions in the chat box. Are there folks who want to unmute and ask a question? Oh, a question just popped up in the chat box, which is, oh, where'd it go? Uh, what do you advise to keep the squirrels from eating the bulbs out of pots? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I don't know. I mean, there, there, there are natural things you can do to try to kind of keep pests away. Um, you know. Carol, I'm thinking maybe you could put maybe some chicken wire over the soil or, or put some chicken wire down and then have it put a little soil over that because the plants will grow through the chicken wire, but a critter will have a hard time digging through the chicken wire. It's just a thought. I don't know. Okay. Carol? Yes. Uh -huh. I, have, I have a couple of suggestions. Um, daffodil d bulbs are poisonous. That's why, or to squirrels, they are. That's why they don't bother them. If you have bulbs that you don't want them to eat, that you're planting in the garden, you can plant them in a tin can that you've cut the bottom and top of it off because the squirrels and 
moles and or the moles come in from the side and they won't be able to get to the bulb if it's down inside a tin can. It'll grow because it can get down through the bottom and up through the top, but the can protects it. Hmm. If I have them in pots, I make chicken wire clutches. I think Zoe just mentioned that. I actually build a whole little cage right over the flower pot because they they as soon as I plant them, they dig them up. <laughs> so that, that's just a couple of suggestions I have. So there's a new question. And, and, and I don't want to forget too that uh, when we are done, Debbie has posted the, um, the link for the evaluation form, which we really, really, really would appreciate folks doing. Um, Charlotte asked, I, she said, I can't get my caladium to, I think I'm saying that right, to regrow after one season. Any thoughts? Um, I don't know. Sometimes things don't come back. Uh, they will just grow for one season. I'd have to look that one up to see if, if it comes back year after year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tanya said she, she apologizes. She, she got here late, mm -hmm. but uh, she asks, and you did answer this, but it doesn't hurt for people to hear it again. When should you cut the greens down after the flowers stop blooming? Right. Well, do not cut the greens down after the flowers stop blooming. You can cut the tops off with the flowers, but leave that there because that's where all the nutrients are stored that go back into the plant. So you have to kind of leave it there. And I know some people say, well, it looks, you know, it looks brown and it looks ugly. And I don't want, well, you have to kind of leave it there. It's a part of nature. It, it's, it's there for a reason. And you have to kind of leave it there until those leaves start turning yellow or brown, and then you can cut them off. And you can always plant like other kind of ground cover around right. where, the, where the bulbs are that will sort of disguise the... Um, <laughs> Yes, dead foliage, and some people get carried away, and they'll braid the, they'll braid the the foliage as it's browning. Um, that's a lot of work, or they'll just kind of uh, twirl them and wrap them in a rubber band, so right. they look like they're being tended to. Right, also a lot of work. Yes, <laughs> depends how many you've got. Right, I I tend to just kind of let them go. Yeah. Other questions? Anybody? Not seeing any other questions. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I would like to uh, close out. Thank everybody for being here today. And thank you, Cheryl, and all my trusted uh, assistants for helping out today. Um, just wanted to let you know, remind you again, that there is a link in the chat box for the evaluation. Um, if you don't have time to do it right now, no worries. I will be sending everyone who attended a follow-up email, um, not only with that link, but you also have links to our page on the Delaware State University website where we have posted, um, we don't have any upcoming classes yet. We won't have any more for the rest of 2022. So check back regularly and check your email. Make sure you add us to your address book so you get our emails that have our, our class listings. Um, and uh, check out the previous recorded videos. Um, I'm getting, in the evaluation, I get a lot of requests for uh, classes that we've actually already done. Um, so be sure you check those out um, because there may be something that's already there that you can just watch that was recorded um, that we did on Zoom. So uh, check out that and I will send you that link in your, uh, follow up email and make sure that if you do have questions, we do have a Master Gardener helpline. Um, we are closed down for the year, but if you have a message, someone at some point, it might take a little bit longer, can come uh, answer your questions. And you can always send an email to the uh, workshop email and ask your questions too. And we'll make sure that we can try to get everybody's questions answered because that's what we're here for. Um, so were there any other questions, Kathy? Was that it? Nope, just a lot of thank yous and, um, and great job and newbies to growing flowers. 
questions might be coming later. Yeah, we were all newbies at one time, that's for sure. It's been a, been a lot of times and a lot of years of, of learning new things to get to get to where we are today. So we were there. Maybe you guys uh, will uh, take some of this uh, to heart and end up becoming master gardeners yourselves one day. That would be awesome. Um, so we always need uh, new ideas and new blood in our organization. Um, so Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, Thank you're quite you. welcome. Thank you're Kathy quite welcome. So, and all of our participants. And we are going to, if there's no more questions, we are going to sign off now. And hopefully we'll see you in 2023, everybody. Thanks, Debbie. Yes, bye. Thanks, Cheryl. Great job. Bye. Thanks, everybody.